video is about. I guess I want to talk about. Hmm, I don't know how to put it. I'm improvising it because my mind isn't as clear as I'd like it to be right now. Well, it's rarely clear. Usually it's fuzzy and usually it's psychically pained or like, not functioning, but whatever. I still make it through. But sometimes I can still improvise something or something can pop up or I could have a sense of like while talking, things will pop up. But I'm not having that experience right now. So I will like, it'll be make it interesting. But I guess I want to talk about how difficult it is to wait on God in the sense of, I think of Joseph, right? How he had a dream that he had a particular future. That, that was, for all intents and purposes, very good. But then he got sold into slavery. And then eventually he got thrown into prison. He helped somebody out. And then the person forgot him for two years. And I even think of David, who was going to be made king. And he had to be on the run for his life for, I think, 13 years, if I if I remember correctly, since he was like 17 or 18 or something. So until he was 30, that's when he became king. So sometimes I look at that and I'm just like, it's a theme with God that he doesn't act on our time. He doesn't help us when we want him to. And sometimes I look at it and I almost see it as, while I want to, I almost want to, like I become impatient for his glory, but also become impatient for my own comfort. Where on one hand, a part of me is like, why won't you just heal me? Why won't you just help me get to where I'm trying to be? Why won't you give me all my resources so I can be self-reliant, independent and competent and creative and be able to like do the things I want to do? And give you the honor and the glory and stuff. Do you not want the honor and the glory, you know, manipulatively speaking? Or why do you have to let me go through these things on my own? Like right now in school, I basically have to get accommodations. But since my Medicare just ran out and I recently I reapplied and I have to wait on it, I couldn't get a psychiatrist to sign accommodation papers so I can get accommodations in school. So I sent my professor an email about my condition, and he decided to give me an extension of my work because today I was very annoyed and stressed because I've been working on this, the first stage of this project that I got yesterday. Well, I had it at the beginning of this week, but yesterday was the first I could work on it because I was working on other homework, reading, doing discussions, answering, doing quizzes, uh, writing other things and stuff like that. So just to get things through things. And while after I got accomodation, I was just like, well, look how accomplished I am now because I can't even do basic things such as get through school. And it's just, school's a lot harder this semester or this session because I'm at a different college and it's basically all self-taught. And it's just, there are no classes that you attend. There are no video classes that you go to. It's all just, um, it's all just, um, what is it? What, what, what can I call it? It's very much you read and you participate in forums and you do quizzes and you write essays and you submit them and stuff. So it doesn't feel like a classroom to me. It feels like self-study. And I was just like, I, I may as well have done this on my own. I may as well just studied on my own and gotten certificates or something like that. But it's just a different way of schooling. And I I guess I like the classes and I like the and real-time interaction with students or even being online, just being able to like get into groups on Zoom or something like that, or like how Zoom and Nova. And I already feel like I'm being handheld too much because our education system is not very rigorous where you don't actually have to, a lot of the quizzes are open book. So you you don't you basically don't have to memorize anything. You just have to know how to get the information, which is fitting for the kind of age that we live in. But I think it doesn't make the most use of your intellect. It doesn't make the most use of your memory. It doesn't make the most use of your creativity. It just makes the use of your resourcefulness and your capacity to research and find things and put it out. And so this feature of things frustrates me because I'm somebody who likes to be able to do my best in things and I can't do my best. So I need my handheld. I need things to go easier on me and it makes me feel very incompetent and frustrated. So I look at this and I become very like, if God has a plan for my life, why won't he just let me start working on it? Now I get the whole pray and obey and read the Bible and help others and do good and, try to refine your character and stuff like that. But I just get so impatient with that because sometimes I'm just like, if I had myself optimally, I could do that to an even greater degree. I could do that more meticulously. I can do that with greater refinement. 
I could do that even better. And I feel like I have to work to be my best at my weakest. I have to work to keep away from certain things. But even while doing that, there are lots of basic things I fail from, fail at, or sometimes I curse a lot, or I'll listen to songs I know are inappropriate, or I'll watch porn, or I'll just, I don't know, like these are my main flaws right now. Or I'll just be irresponsible with how I manage my room or something. Like my room's not very clean. Actually, everything's where it's supposed to be, but it's not, I haven't cleaned it up. I just make it functional. I'm more big on function and aesthetics. It's not necessarily messy. But it's just, there are just ways that I want to be right now that I feel like would be easier if I was at full strength, if I was optimal, if I had full capacity, if I capable of being able to think the way I used to think, being able to be creative the way I used to be creative, being able to be socially uh, flexible and uh, entertaining and stuff, being able to have full control of my body, to be able to physically exert myself and coordinate myself with singing and dancing and working out and practicing martial arts and things like that, and just be able to like refine skills and get really good at things and be able to like um, get on with things. Because I like the reason why I just feel like I had nothing to offer is because I'm so subpar in many ways. Like there's nothing I have going for me that shows the dedication I put into certain skills to acquiring certain skills that I was refining, certain points of views, certain insights to things. And I can't always express things the way I want to, especially with complex ideas. Like I like a, uh, What's it called? I guess you could call it a matrix, but a, it's like a, a matrix in the terms of like how when you think of a stone geology, like a conglomerate that holds different stones together. I lack the ability to synthetically hold information together and scaffold it on top of each other. So I, that's one of the reasons why a lot of my videos are very improvisational because it's very hard for me to sit down and just write a coherent idea without my head swimming all over the place and slurring and getting lost and being inconcise and stuff like that when I used to be able to write aphorisms before and be able to write bullet points for everything and make everything pristine so it's just very frustrating and I lost what I was going to say that's also another thing everything I say I sometimes I'll lose a target or I'll lose the previous things I was saying so then I get lost on where I'm going and where I came from so I'm stuck stranded it's so annoying so I was just I'm constantly having all these problems and yet the problems the things I want to think about the things I want to work on are very complex and require you to be very functional. So it's a weird cast 22 because those are the areas I naturally want to go into and what I'm passionate about and what I was naturally leaning on and what I used to I cultivate myself to be able to do. And now having that stripped away from me, there's a sense of my life feeling derailed and me not being able to make the most of who I want to be. And I don't want to feel like I'm complaining, but it's just... It's not easy. One of the worst things you could possibly have with you is like an impairment. And I can talk about overcoming and willing yourself and taking the next step and choosing to focus and all these different things. But every now and then it gets to you. Like today, when I was supposed to work on the thing, when I was trying to work on it, I felt like a tension in my throat and I felt being blocked up peripherally in my mind and my frontal cortex feeling blocked. And not being able to like penetrate with analysis, not being able to synthesize, not being able to structure or like build things on top of each other, but just sort of like streaming and trying to capture relevance and put it down. And then later come back to when my mind was fresh, be able to like do something new with it and stuff like that. And this is, that's not a very efficient way to work when you're on a limited time, uh, when you're li the limited time, especially since I work. So all my free time when I get home is to do chores and then to do homework. I spend a lot of time doing homework and most of my homework is reading. So it's just, that's very frustrating because originally I was going to take three classes because I took four classes when I was at community college last year or earlier these past three months uh, in spring, I mean. And, but now that I'm actually in a fishery university, they recommended I take two, but I thought I could take three because I was just like, oh, I took four. So three shouldn't be too bad. Then I realized the workload is like a lot. There's a lot to do and I'm not as fluent and I'm not as uh, effective as I used to be. 
So it's just a struggle. And so with all that said, I'm trying, it's teaching me vulnerability per usual. It's teaching me weakness. It's teaching me dependence. It's teaching me to be trusting of God and patient with him. Because my sister's boyfriend texted me uh, a few mornings ago about how like he has been praying for me. And I didn't even tell him I was in school or anything like that. But he told me how like I should uh, invite God to help me with school and to like tell him about the things I'm thinking about and reading all the ideas I'm planning and like he wants to help me with it and be there for me so I was just like oh wow I guess he did reach out to me but he reached out to me through somebody else which is typically how it goes I don't know why I never I rarely get I direct messages like I get dreams but I can't always interpret the dreams and most of my dreams are narcissistic but the ones that seem significant I give it to other people like my mom or my, uh, my mom's friend who's like an uncle to me and have him interpret he's like a prophet he tends to see things and has visions and he feels the Holy Spirit and and all the different phenomenological sensations that come with that. So that's pretty much all I wanted to share. Uh, it's just sometimes I just have to keep going and I have to trust and I'll see what comes of my life, what comes in the future. I just have to make it through the immediate moment because it can be very much, I have a vague vision for who I want to be and what I want to do. But when I feel stuck in the moment, it feels like this is all that there is. And if I can't master this moment, if I can't overcome this moment, then I'll never make it there. So, and then that makes the moment seem even more impenetrable, more difficult to get through, more a greater height, more difficult to climb up, 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 uh, up on. So it's just one of those things that there's lots of psychological states, lots of uh, mental tricks, lots of self-deceptions, lots of confusions that your mind will play on you. You have to learn how you calculate, how you invest yourself, how the price you're willing to pay, why you're doing what you're doing, what you want out of your life, the kind of person you want to be, what you actually want, not what you feel like you should do, what you want to do, the kind of person you want to be, and stuff like that, and what you choose. And this is what God tends to invite you, where he invites us to choose him. He invites us to trust him. He invites us to want us to be somebody who's faithful to him, just as he's faithful to us. And in due time, I trust that he'll show himself to be faithful to me and he'll bring himself glory. So just like he's brought himself glory through my mom, or through other people who've told me their testimonies and whose lives I've seen unfold for the better and seen them overcome many things, even though they struggle every now and then, or, or, or rather they're struggling now even, because life is, you always struggle, there's always something you're going through. No, and then things aren't permanent. So these are the things I'm dealing with right now. So thanks for listening. Uh... I don't know, just maybe comment, tell me how you guys get through with I guess, um, waiting on God for things, whether it's healing or transformation or progress or uh, security or whatever, because it's very nonlinear. It's kind of like, I always go back to that verse that Jesus said about the spirit, how like he said the spirit is like the wind. You never know where it starts from, where it's going. So that's the process of the Spirit so saving people. But it seems to be that's also the process of how God selects people, where we never know who he's picking. We never know why he's picking them. We just know that he picks people for an end, and he takes their weaknesses and makes strengths out of them. And like Moses, um, Moses said he wasn't a good speaker. And he felt like he had no authority here and that he had no legitimacy and stuff and god made him a leader and at the end of deuteronomy he's basically giving a speech to everyone he's laid out he gave them the law he's been god to aaron uh he's his face is radiating with god's glory and stuff so god takes our weaknesses and makes strengths out of them he takes the things we go through and brings himself glory and it's just so such a fascinating process it's that's the true alchemy actually that's the real alchemy god is a real alchemist so he can make go out of any crappy situation that you are, any crappy situation that you're in. And I guess that's the message I want to leave you guys with. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye, y'all.